Most people believe that the cornerstone to building and preserving your wealth is with real estate. I'm here to tell you today that they're wrong and it's a trap. We are holistically being attacked today with the encumbrance on our freedom because that has increased at an unprecedented rate today with the excessive indebtedness, inflation, purchase power erosion, the velocity and the penetration of technology under the guise of productivity and efficiency, the reshuffling and overreach of global power. All of this unconventional warfare leads to the destruction of wealth and the destruction of the family and an increase in social unrest. And real estate becomes a target for that destruction. I'm Rob Napolitano. Welcome to Thriving Through Chaos, Conflict, and Crisis. For those of you that want to protect your wealth and protect your assets and, and endure and maybe even thrive through these headwinds, I hold these sessions every week for one reason and one reason only. I'm asked to provide independent, verified facts so that you may have what you need to defend what you what is yours, and then you can decisively act when you see weakness. So today I'm going to show you their weakness. So I invite you to listen for the next seven minutes, seven to 10 minutes I'll be, because I've already had this battle. This is an enemy that I have already faced and I've won. You see, thriving through chaos and conflict and crisis, it all starts with three simple steps. One is to get educated, have a quick, decisive action, limit your costs and your conflicts. The most prepared wins every time. You see, just like you, I struggled long ago because going through the 2008, I was doing a billion dollars in transactions. I was doing originations, modifications. And then once the crisis hit, I actually found myself where I'd lost everything and had to go into a chapter of 13. But I went to law school. I became educated. I prepared my defense and decisively struck at the big banks that were foreclosing on me, and I struck at their weakness. I won two big lawsuits against the banks, and I came out at a higher net worth than when I went in. But that's how I got to look at the inside of the system and how it works. And where I realized that the average person, people like you and me, that we're basically flying blind today in investing. So I took action, and I felt a personal and professional responsibility to share my insights educate other people, cut through the noise, and give you facts backed by data to empower you to make more intelligent and informed decisions. That's why I do these briefings every week. See, there's a lot of noise going on. There's a lot of change going on, and a great deal of confusion and complexity that goes on today. But with all of this, it brings disruption, inefficiencies, and misalignments, and exposes weaknesses on both sides, on the investor side, on the advisor side, on the asset side, it exposes weakness that all these movements start happening. And in, in these movements and exposure of weaknesses, it creates opportunity. Opportunities to be seized by those that are informed and ready to attack when their weaknesses are exposed. Today, I wanna to talk about Trojan horses and the theme of Trojan horses and how Sun Tzu from the art of war, it's got this philosophy in saying that you need to beware of those who fight for their own desire rather than those that fight for the love of their contemporaries. See, that's the evilness. And we have that out there in the finance world today with our the advisors that are out there. The advisors that are out there are looking to serve themselves. This is called an alignment of interests. The majority of the advisors out there and planners do not have an alignment of interests with you. And this is what the theme is going to be today about alignment of interests and showing you where their weaknesses are and how you can attack these weaknesses in the alignment of interests. You see, in the next 20 years, there's going to be a wealth transfer from one generation to the next to the tune of $84 trillion. But that's what they're talking about. Oh, there's going to be a great wealth transfer. But that's not what they're really focusing on. They're focusing on the generation of fees, that that wealth transfer, the movement of that money is going to generate fees for them. And that's why they're going to go out there and try and be your best friend and tell you where they want you to invest and they know the best for you and they have your best interest at heart. No, they're looking at those fees. So when people are becoming smart, investors are becoming smarter and seeing this now and they're starting to look at other things and other alternatives and different ways of doing things. So people are becoming smart. So the... Financial planning 
It's a financial planning newsletter that goes out. And I saw this this week that the SEC put out a warning to investors about these fees that a lot of these advisors are charging and planners. And, and, and they're all charging these fees in the name of we got here and we got your back. But look at what's happening here with the SEC advice here that these advisors and promoters and these broker dealers and all these reps, they recommend funds, certain particular funds and certain particular investments over others, not because it's good for you, but based on factors other than their clients and customers' best interest. This is not me saying this. This is the SEC putting out a warning and the financial planning industry putting out a newsletter on that this week. So it's out there. People know. The SEC knows. But people need to become more aware of what's going on. Watch out where who you get your advice from. The people are serving themselves are the ones you want to watch out for. Beware. As I've spoke about this many times, that only 30% of investors' expectations are being met by the industry. This system is not set up for you, for you to thrive, okay? You have to be very careful as to who you're talking to, who you're using as an advisor, where you're getting your information from. You need to have independent education and independent verified data. As I spoke about last week as well, a lot of the people now are looking to get away from advisors, looking into alternatives, because the number one thing that they want to do, people with wealth now, is they're looking moving forward to get a uh, a total return on their investment because they're seeing now that the traditional markets, the bonds, the stocks, there's a lot of risk, there's a lot of turmoil there. Our biggest concern is how do we end up getting this total return now? And you know where they're being pushed? They're being pushed into private debt. That's the number one place where big money is now going into is in private debt. Does that mean that's where you need to go? No, 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 no. There's snakes over there too. You got to be careful with the private debt. Because again, what they're not going to tell you is where the pitfalls are and where the real juicy returns are. They're in there. There's a lot of snakes in there. You need to be careful getting into this area of expertise as well. Let me show you. I put together, within the last 90 days, I put together a list of the deal flow that came across our desk here. And I put a billion dollars together. First, I'm going to show you that the first column here, these are the balances. So these are a number of different trades that are going on where banks are getting rid of loans that are on their books, all backed by real estate. This is not unsecured debt. This is not credit card debt. This is not uh, corporate debt. This is real estate debt. This is debt owned by banks backed by real, real estate. And so these are different banks getting rid of different trades. And the first one is you know for seven hundred and fifty million dollars location is all over the country with mixed types of collateral underneath commercial real uh, residential all sorts of different mixed types of collateral and it was ninety nine hundred loans in various stages of, uh, of of a loan's life whether it be in default maturity performing and that's what this column is here it tells you the stage sub performing or NPL is a non performing loan where the payments aren't being made. Season performing means that it was not paying, it was modified, and now the borrower has been making payments for an, a prolonged period of time. Maturity performing means that they're paying as expected. And so they have different stages of performance, these loans. And they're and they're rated and they're qualified and they're and they're have different risk profiles. And so what you'll see here is that different banks they want to sell different balances. Uh, in different states, location of states, geographically in the United States here, uh, and the underlying collateral. But what I want to show you here, I said to you in the beginning that owning real estate is a trap. And here's where I wanted to illustrate this right here. A year, a two, maybe three years ago, if you said that, you know, I want to build my empire and the number one thing you had to have in your empire, people will tell you when you ask them, you have to have real estate. You have to have commercial real estate. You have to have commercial real estate. Commercial real estate, it's real. It's solid. You can get finance. You can make all this money. That's great. Now I want you to go back and ask all those same people today, how's their real estate doing? Commercial real estate. Commercial real estate right now is tanking. Commercial real estate right now is experiencing record losses. Record losses. 
And I can tell this is what I'm showing you. These are the banks that are trying to get rid of the loans. They're trying to get rid of these loans because the underlying collateral is not worth anything anymore. It's not worth what it used to be, taking losses. And so the banks don't want to take the losses either. So they'd rather go and sell this stuff. And they're going to sell it to another fund, another private credit manager, and do workouts and stuff. But the people with the real estate, they're the ones that are taking the hit. Set up, laid out by this enormous amount of debt, low interest rate, free money, easy money. Go buy real estate, build up your empire. But remember, we are living in an environment today where you need to be active because the environment we're living in today has got those five C's, the chaos, crisis, conflict, and that creates complexity and confusion. And the good news in the midst of all that is that with all this, there's opportunity, but you have to be informed to make those decisions about what's a right deal and what maybe even is real or not real. And these weekly briefings help you to do that. So I hope that you can come from a place where you can gain some clarity and confidence to protect your assets, grow your own wealth in a sound and efficient manner. So with that said, if you have any questions about any of the facts that I laid out here today, I welcome the opportunity to give me a call. Challenge me, one-on-one -on -one conversation. If you think that it's not real, tell me you think it's not real. If you think that there's something else going on out there, call me. So I wish you all a happy and prosperous day. I'll see you all next time.